Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to this month's Patrick Adair Supplies subscription box video. Today we are going to be making the Siberian Mammoth Tooth and uh, we're right in the middle of winter. I thought this would be the perfect time to do this, a, a kind of a frosty themed ring. We've got spring around the corner. Uh, we're gonna have things thawing out. So we've got genuine Siberian Mammoth Tooth here. It's crushed up and we've got it put out in this little jar here. And then this is glow powder. It's just pure white and it glows white. So a uh, really unique glow powder that's just a really pure color that it gives off so I think it matches perfectly with the Siberian just kind of winter frosty theme that we've got going on here and then as far as the blank for it goes we're going to be using tungsten carbide for this this is I think out of all ring blank materials probably my overall favorite it's just such a solid uh, material it's got a really good weight to it so it feels like your ring when you're done is a really good quality it's very durable and then it's literally almost impossible to scratch tungsten, it's that hard. So, fantastic material combination, we're keeping it simple. Uh, it should be a really clean looking ring and then in the dark, because we're not adding any pigment to it, it'll be really bright as far as the glow goes. So, really fun ring. I'm joined here with Dave who's going to help out with the whole process. Um, we've got some of our safety equipment, very important. Dave's gonna be wearing the face shield, that keeps any debris from flying at you. Of course, you want a dust mask. You don't want to have ground up chemicals or anything like that, vapors, things like that. You do not want those getting into your respiratory system, so always make sure to wear that. And then just some general super glue, super glue accelerator. And then of course, we have our ring mandrel set here. We've got our small, medium, large. This is the ultimate set that we have available on the website. And these will work really nicely. As far as uh, working with this with tungsten, there's not a lot you have to do. Uh, when you do black ceramic, for example, you have to coat the mandrel in electric tape. For tungsten, just go ahead and put it straight on. And it looks like this one fits on the third rung of the medium mandrel just perfectly. We could go back and it might, not quite. So we literally, this will work perfectly on the middle mandrel. So we've got that ready to go. I'll set these aside. So other than that, we're ready to pull the lathe out and get started. So let's get into it. Alright, I've got my ring blade set up on the mandrel here, nice and tight. I've got, uh, this is a very simple ring we're gonna do today. We just have our inlay and a uncolored glow powder. Uh, the idea behind this ring is that uh, it has a lot of inlay in it. So we're gonna go ahead and get, um, I'd say, 16 pieces of this mammoth tooth. You'll notice that uh, some of it is uh, much darker than the rest of it. I like to incorporate both colors as much as possible. All right, I've got all my material selected and together, and now I'm ready to start inlaying this ring. All right, for this ring, how are you going to uh, place the material? I know last month we were just kind of random. We were just trying to pack in as much as we could. Um, for this one, we're probably gonna be using a little bit less, it looks like, based on your pile. Yeah, we're gonna be using a fair amount, just enough to get this ring um, packed, but like we also wanna achieve that clean look. Um, I'm gonna go for a nice natural look to go along with that mammoth tooth, almost like it's frozen in the glow powder. Okay, I like it. Yeah, and of course, a lot of this is up to your own discretion. You can use your artistic judgment to uh, pick however much you want to inlay into there, what the spacing you want to use is, which colors of the material you want to use, anything like that. Always up to you guys. But this, is, as far as rings goes, it looks like we're just going to do it fairly, um, just kind of like our bread and butter. We, we like to get it nice organic spacing, nothing that's too even. We don't want there to be a recognizable pattern. We want to have a good variance of color, all of that. We just want to make it look as natural as possible. And so you can see the way Dave's inlaying these, it, there's, there's a little bit of strategy to it and it depends on a lot of the time the size of the particles. And so these mammoth tooth chunks, they're uh, fairly large. And so we're just going ahead and he's just inlaying them directly onto the ring. Um, sometimes if you've got smaller pieces, you can save material by doing a layer or two of really thin glow powder. 
outer layers. That way it kind of builds it up a little bit. Then you can uh, add the smaller pieces and they'll still show up once you've grinded it all down. And then, yeah, you just set the piece in place with the super glue and then you pour a little bit of powder over the top of it and that just uh, sets it all in place, make sure it's not going to slide around or anything like that. All right, I've got all the pieces that I would like to put in this ring in there. I'm going to go ahead and spray some accelerator on here and then finish inlaying it. All right, so we do mammoth rings a little different than the rest of our rings. For these, we want to leave a little bit of clear space instead of fill, filling the whole ring with low powder. So I'm going to go ahead and put a nice layer of super glue over the entire ring. And then we will just sprinkle in some glow powder to give it a nice, uh, I don't know, snowy or textured look. And I think this is one of the most important techniques to learn from this video. This ring is fairly straightforward, fairly simple. I'd say this is probably the most complex or unique thing to it. And it's a subtle look that it gives it, but it does make it look, uh, I think, significantly better, especially for these material combinations. And so we'll show it off really close up at the end of the video and we'll point out exactly what we're talking about. But just giving it some clear space in there, that just gives it so much more room for depth where you've got an otherwise not super colorful ring or anything like that. So just gives it a little bit more interest. All right, before I get started sanding this ring, I would like to go over a few things. First, uh, Mammoth Tooth is a soft material. So when you're sanding, you don't have to be too rough with it. Uh, second of all, um, the sandpaper can stain the color of the ring. So I will show you later during the hand sanding process how to uh, fix that problem, but just something to be aware of. Uh, another afterthought would be that Mammoth 2 smells awful when you sand it, so just a fair warning. All right, I'm gonna replace that bit. You go through these fairly quickly when you're grinding it down at this stage just because you're putting a lot of pressure on certain points. Also, one thing to note is you could see just kind of how careful I was being while doing this. You don't wanna uh, overheat any of the spots on the ring that can cause certain things to melt and make the ring less durable. And uh, it really gunks up your Dremel pretty quickly. So you just wanna do kind of light taps and just slowly work all of the materials down until you get them flush with the height of the ring itself and uh, you should have the most success doing that technique I'd say. Alright, so I've gone in by hand and I've gotten rid of any of the raised areas, specifically where the mammoth tooth would be, and uh, I'm just going to do a final check on it. So I'll just turn the lathe on at a kind of a medium speed and then just give it a general a go over with the 
uh, sandpaper on the Dremel, uh, but I'm not gonna be too hard on it. I don't wanna put any scratches in the tungsten because they're very hard to get out. Okay, that should be good. I'll just give it a quick look uh, by eye to make sure I don't see any raised areas. You wanna take care and make sure you do this now because if you notice the mistake later, you just have to start over and then you just wasted time sanding after this. So uh, you wanna do it when it's at the roughest stage. You wanna make sure it's ready to go. Then you can worry about getting it polished and shined up. And I just noticed this uh, spot right here, it's a little bit higher than I'd like. So I'm gonna tap that down, uh, inspect the whole thing again, then hopefully we'll be ready to move on to uh, the next sanding steps. All right, that looks really good. So now what I'm going to do uh, I noticed there's a couple of little holes in the ring that was due to bubbles uh, when we added the glue. And so I'm gonna go patch those real quick. So this is simple enough. Uh, you just wanna make sure you get the glue down in the hole the best you can. So you just find the spot. I like to take the glue and put it directly over top of it. And then try to just literally force it down in. That looked like it worked really well. Then I'll immediately just cure it. I wanna have just enough glue on there to fill the hole, not a lot extra, because that's just a lot of extra work to have to remove anything excess. So fill it in, looks perfect. Hit it with some accelerator, should be good to go. And I'll give it a final inspection once it's dried off here. Yeah, that looks like it's filled in. Um, I'll go ahead and sand it flush real quick by hand. Okay, yeah, that was really easy. It's just barely sticking up. And then now we'll be able to move on to the hand sanding steps and it will blend in perfectly. Perfect. All right, so now, um, before we move on to the hand sanding, I'm gonna go, and I'm, I'm taking this razor blade here, and uh, this works especially well on tungsten because the steel in the razor won't scratch it. So if you're using something like titanium where it can get scratched, you might not wanna do this. You might wanna be a little bit more careful, but there's some uh, little spots of super glue on this edge here and I can just chip those off. It just comes right off. So any excess super glue, really easy to get rid of. And this, honestly, this is something there, if you don't get it at this step, you can wait till the end of the ring and just knock it off there because the tungsten holds a perfect polish throughout the entire time. So. Any super glue on the tungsten can always be dealt with and you usually don't have to go back. So not a major issue at all, especially on tungsten rings. Okay, it looks like I got the last little piece there. It came off nicely. Should be easy to go. Something I sometimes like to do is I just take the razor blade, hold it flat against the ring like so. And then just make sure everything's off there and you can, really easily feel any bumps or imperfections with this. So that's just kind of a good check. I'll hold it against the bevel. There's no bumps, so there's not gonna be any patches of super glue stuck on there. So that's just a really easy way to check. And if there's any pieces of the mammoth tooth sticking out a lot, they would hit against the blade and uh, it'd be really apparent. So that's something, you know, you definitely don't have to do that, but it's a trick I like to do every once in a while. Um, okay, so now as far as sanding goes, the inlay itself, uh, the point where we're at right now, we've got a couple of issues. All right, so at this point, it might be a little bit tricky to show on camera, but you can see there's some deep scratch grooves left in the ring, so we're definitely gonna need to get rid of that. And then also, I think this is a good point. If you can see right here, some of that discoloration, it's a little bit uh, of a brown color, that's where when you've got the Dremel wheel spinning here, you have some of the mammoth tooth break off in it. And it could even be the brown color from the Dremel itself. It can come from a lot of different things, but you kind of grind it into the inlay itself. 
And so we need to get rid of that. It's just kind of a surface level imperfection. And so the way to do that, the way to clean that up is you just wanna get your uh, water spray bottle here and you just do a, a really thorough wet sanding. So you wanna keep it really wet, keep it really clean and just get any of that dirt impurities or just anything else that's stuck or grind it into it. You just wanna get all of that out. So uh, that's what I'm going to focus on with this step. I'm going to start with a 220 grit sandpaper and just do a really good thorough wet sand. So I've got my sandpaper here. Uh, it's not apparent yet, but this is a lot bigger than the other pieces of sandpaper I'll be using. And uh, that's just because I'm going to be spending a lot more time on this step, doing a lot more thorough job. So I'll get it spinning, get it a little bit wet. And just really gently start sanding that. You want to keep it really wet during this stage because you're just trying to get rid of all of that uh, just gunk that's stuck in there. I'm going to uh, slowly start turning the speed of the lathe up until I can really start sanding away some of that material. All right, so I just wanna check on it. I'm about halfway through my sandpaper. I wanna make sure things are going well. And uh, right here, I definitely am not getting rid of this yet. So I'm probably going to have to uh, cut off a bigger piece and continue going till I can get rid of that. Um, that's why it's good to check. Just uh, make sure what you're doing work is working because right now it's not. So I just know I gotta do a more thorough job. And then just as far as anything else goes, uh, maybe a more of an advanced technique you wanna just reverse the direction of your lathe every once in a while. So now it's going forwards, now I've got it in reverse. So just switch it up, and the reason for that is because if there's any bumps in the ring, it's going, as it spins, it's going to bump your finger, therefore the sandpaper is gonna bump it up a little bit, and then it's not going to sand the space right behind it. So you bump up, it rotates, and you come back down, and sometimes it kind of shields the uh, material behind it, and you can't get to it. So um, if you ever see any issues that you think might be because of that, um, that would be a really good tip for uh, solving that issue is just make sure you uh, reverse the direction of your lathe every once in a while. All right, I'm seeing a really big improvement as far as the uh, purity and the color on this. I still think I wanna do a little bit more. I've done a ton of sandpaper, um, but it really is worth it to take your time at this step. It makes a really big difference. And if you're wondering why I'm not going to use a rougher grit sandpaper, I could, but I do like to be as gentle as I can on the rings. I don't wanna cause any scratches on the tungsten, for example. And so I just like to, when I, whenever I can, leave it at 220 grit. In this circumstance, maybe I should have dropped a little bit lower, maybe used 150 grit, um, but this will do. It's just gonna take a little bit of extra time and overall we're gonna be left with a better looking ring. So um, I like to go as gentle as I can, but you can do it however you want, obviously. So I'll do a little bit more of the 220 grit, but we are almost ready to go. And then from then on out, I'm going to switch over to my booklet of sandpaper and that's where I'll switch and go uh, up through all the grits. There's about 200 to 500 uh, range between each grit. So I usually go from 200 to a 320 or 400 
and then from there up to a six or 800, up to a thousand and just so on. I usually go up to about 2000 before I switch over to the polishing. But for this ring, there's uh, some special tips I have for that. I'll get to that in a second, but for now, um, it's just a standard sanding procedure. And I've said it in uh, past videos, but uh, in between sanding grits, it's a really good idea to take your uh, water bottle and spray off the ring. Uh, you don't wanna uh, contaminate it with any of the previous grits. So for example, right now I'm using, uh, I think a 600 grit. Uh, you can't see because it's on this, but I, I know I'm about 600 grit into the booklet. Um, and so I don't wanna have any of these 600 grit particles stuck on the ring when I switch over to 800, that'll mess it up. And so I just take this, rinse it off, and then that way you don't contaminate it in between steps. All right, this is looking really good. I've got it up to a 2000 grit. And you can see it's got a really nice, pure, almost white color. And then the rest of it's looking really good. So it's really smooth right now, but not really glossy. That's what we need to polish with. And that's one of the, uh, a, a really main lesson that we wanna talk about for this video. And when we're doing an uncolored ring, when you take it to the polishing wheel, there's a lot of room for mistakes that can happen there. And so uh, the way the polish wheel works is you have your polish, it's just a uh, fine grit of compound. Here, I'll grab a bar right here. So basically the material of this comes off onto the, the wheel of the polisher. So you've got a lot of this just gunk on there and this is what polishes it. It's uh, depending on the size of the particles in your brick here is depending on how fine the polish is. And so this is a rough polish. It's probably got um, some pretty large abrasive particles within this. It's kind of like a clay. And uh, what will happen is when you're polishing it, this uh, the polish will come off onto the ring and any little cracks or uh, imperfections in the ring will collect it like crazy and it will cause your ring to get all sorts of dark spots all over it. And I don't really like the look that it gives you. And I'd show you guys an example, but I don't really want to ruin the ring. And so you guys can experiment with it on your own. If you're careful enough and if you've uh, made the ring, uh, I guess, kind of like airtight, so there's not really any pockets or micro voids in it, you can do a decent job with it, but I do really prefer the look without it. And so what I'm going to do is I've got here, and what I've got here, this is literally uh, designed for nails. So it's just a file block and these just work wonderfully. They're cheap, inexpensive, they work well, they last a good little while and they do a really good job. You, there's also a material called micro mesh that you can get that's essentially the same thing with a, a lot more steps, but essentially this is just sandpaper, but it goes up to a very, very, very smooth finish to the point where this doesn't even feel rough at all and it'll uh, shine it up really nicely, just like you would for a nail. So that's what I'm going to do for this video. Uh, once I'm done, I'm gonna show it off to you guys and show you some of the pros and cons and just my thoughts on uh, using this method in general. And then the steps for it, uh, very much similar to sanding. Uh, you want these to last a while, so just be careful with it. Uh, you want it to be uh, as durable as possible, so just go easy on it. I always like to get it wet. That's gonna make it last longer, of course. Oh, and I'm going the wrong direction. That should be enough. 
I'll move on to the second step and just repeat until I've uh, All right, that worked perfectly. Yeah, if you do all the steps properly, if you take your time, uh, you're really gonna get better results. And I'll try to show it off on camera as best I can, um, but you'll see if you rush through a ring, if you don't take your time, the time required to get a good finish on every single one of the steps, it really does show in the final product. So I'll show it off to you guys now and just give you some of my thoughts on it in general. All right, here it is finished. If I can get it to focus. There we go. You can see we've got a shiny, glossy finish on it and we never touched it to the polishing wheel. It, we could bring a slight amount of higher polish out of it, but we'd have that trade-off where we'd get it dirty with the uh, gunk from the polishing wheel. So, I think this is kind of that perfect medium. I think it looks really nice. It is definitely glossy and shiny but we've kept it really nice and clean. So this is a beautiful ring. You can see just all of the variation that the Mammoth Tooth has. We got this dark brown, almost like a cola color is what it reminds me of. Brown, almost black. Then here, really, it really does just look like black, maybe a really dark brown. And then uh, elsewhere, we've got some of these off-white pieces. You can see them throughout. So just a really nice, really natural look. And the ring, if it'll fit. The ring has a really nice look. And right now I've got a lot of dark background, so the tungsten itself looks pretty dark. But you can see because it's so shiny, it takes a lot of the color from its environment. So it looks blue right now because of my uh, blue gloves. So um, it looks a little bit dark in these videos, in this video particularly but it is fairly, uh, a little bit lighter just in general. So there it is. You can see, is that just, yeah, it's just water. So we've got a really nice surface finish. I'll go around, I'll look for just any imperfections that I could point out and tell to you guys. Um, there's a little bit of, you can always see a little, just tiny bit of scratching on the tungsten. You can see right here, especially. And that's left by the rough Dremel. So anything you can do to be gentle while you're dremeling is always good. And you can of course always use some diamond paste to help get rid of any of the scratches. Um, but it's uh, minor enough that I still think it looks really good. This is a macro lens, so a larger than life look. And it still looks nice in my opinion. And other than that, I did a very thorough job on that first sanding and it really pays off. You can't really see any deep scratches. I'm looking for them. It looks pretty good. We got the pieces all sanded down flush. So there's nothing sticking out. There's not any uh, weird bumps on it or anything. And then no scratches. So that's exactly what you want to do. Just do a thorough job. If you're worried that you might have any scratches, if you're wondering if you should do uh, more sanding or less, just error on the side of more sanding. Nothing wrong with that. So yeah, that's the ring, guys. We'll, of course, have some shots of it glowing as well as just some uh, better, more professional looking pictures. But other than that, that's going to be the video for this month. If you have any questions at all, we try to be as helpful as we can, but of course there's still gonna be some more. So you can always reach out to our support email or just leave comments on this video if you're watching on YouTube. Um, and just any other way of getting a hold of us, we'd be more than happy to uh, give you any advice, any tips, anything you need. So let us know. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in next month's video.